Welcome back to Muddy Creek Rabbits. I'm David Gerling. Today we're going to talk about breed selection. Selecting which breed to work with is one of the most important decisions you can make when you decide to raise or show rabbits. And the selection of your breed depends totally on what you plan to do with it, whether you're raising strictly for show, for show and me, or show for pets. Me and my wife raise Rex. I've raised him for 25 years. She's just lucked into it. My father raises Holland Lops and has done for close to 30 years. And my seven-year-old son has just begun raising Mini Rex. This is Matilda. She's about a four-month-old Rex. She's almost a tricolor. She's got a couple orange spots. We're still working with her on how to sit. She's a much better rabbit than she wants to be today. Rex have very good meat qualities. They also have a very plush-like coat. They're pretty easy to handle, which is one of the things if you're new you want to talk, you want to be able to do is handle your rabbits. Some breeds are more easily handled than others, although each rabbit has its own personality. To decide which breed you like, one of the best things you can do is go to a show and talk to different breeders, look at different rabbits. Most rabbit breeders are more than happy to talk about their rabbits with um, new people. Um, you can also pick up a standard of perfection. It's available from Amazon and the RBA website. Some libraries also carry it, especially in smaller libraries that have more 4-H and FFA members. Um, the internet's also a place to look for them. This is Skylander. He is about a year old. He's one of my son's mini Rex. He's Himalayan colored. As you can see, the size difference between a full grown mini Rex and a Rex that's just getting to be junior showing age. The Rex will top out about nine pounds is the ideal weight. Minimum weight for bucks is seven and a half, maximum is nine and a half. Does are ten to t or eight to ten and a half. Mine tend to be towards the larger end of the scale. But so mini Rex are a good starting breed for youth. They're small, they're easy to handle, they're plentiful. You two be good. But one thing to look for is they both want you want very dense coats for both which unfortunately is kind of hard to describe in a video. It's something you'd have to work with hands on, but it feels very much like velvet. The Rex are, the Mini Rex are a compact type. You want them nice and short and rise starting and coming up a lot. The Rex are a commercial type, so their rise is slightly more gradual, although you want a good amount of rise Unfortunately, one weakness in my line is I don't have the rise that I need at the moment. And we'll go into that in a later video. As I said, Mini Rex make a good youth starter. Their maximum weight is four and a half pounds. So they're about half the size of the Rex when full grown. They're also a nice, calm pet rabbit. So if you're looking at something to raise for pets, Mini Rex are a very popular pet breed right now. This is Odin. This is one of my father's Holland Lops. He is a black otter. He is not the best show rabbit. He's being around, kept around mainly for his color. Holland are also a compact type, but they're also a dwarf, so they'll, they pose farther up on their feet than what the Mini Rex would, although he does not want to pose at all. The dwarf breeds lately on social media have been gain, gaining a lot of negative attention because they have the shorter face, and a lot of people believe that the short face causes malclusion. Um, it's more the lines. If you breed rabbits with malclusion, you'll get rabbits with malclusion. So you want to look at the breeders. And just to clarify, if you don't know, malclusion 
is where the teeth don't line up right and will grow the top teeth will curl and the bottom teeth will jut out. Rabbits are not rodents. They actually have a second set of incisors behind the front and the teeth fit like this. So, but as I said, it's a genetics have a lot to do with it. So if you get dwarfs, whether they be Netherland dwarfs, Holland Lops, Jersey Woolies, from a line that specifically breeds out malclusion when it, they do happen, then you don't really have anything to worry about. It's irresponsible breeders that, well, we'll just trim the teeth and keep breeding that cause the issues. Holland Lops are a very good starter rabbit. If you're going to show, be prepared for big classes as Holland Lops are one of the most popular breeds, so the competition is high. But they're also one of the calmest. As you can see, he really doesn't care that I'm doing anything here. He's kind of laying out like a rug, like he's enjoying it. We recommend with our 4-H kids, if they don't have a breed already picked out, that they start with either a Holland Lop or a Mini Rex, just because of ease of handle, their temperament, and most people like the Lops. This is also, if you're going to raise also for pets, this is a very good breed. The pet market loves Holland Lops. There's a huge range of colors. Some are easier to find than others. One thing with the Holland Lops is that a lot of them also carry a recessive Angora gene, which is where the basis of the American Fuzzy Lops come from. They're, fuzzy Lops are basically a Holland Lop with a longer coat. There's some other standard differences, such as headset. The Fuzzy Lops have a mid headset, which is what closer to what his is. But Fuzzy Lops, if you like a long furred rabbit and don't mind brushing every day, also make a very good pet because they share a lot of the same personality that the Holland Lops have. This is 13. She is a four and a half month old cow, California. I keep Californians around just because I like the breed. These were developed as a meat breed along with New Zealand Whites. These are the two most popular breeds bred for me. They also have very strong show qualities. They are a large beefy rabbit. They also, the Californians I have and have had the chance to handle almost all have very docile temperaments for such a large rabbit. Their fur is a little more dense than a New Zealand, so if you want to breed for pelts as well as meat, this is a good breed to get into. This is the only color they come in, is the pointed black, whereas some of the other breeds that recognize the Himalayan and the Californian varieties, which are the same gene, just large rabbits are Californian, small rabbits are Himalayan. The, some of the smaller ones come in the black, blue, chocolate, and lilac colors, whereas the large Californians are only the black. We'll talk about the different colors later. She's going through an ugly spurt right now. She's lost some of the rise she had. But she's still a very, very solid rabbit. If you like big rabbits, this is Phineas. Phineas is a Flemish giant. He is actually small for his breed. Minimum weight for senior Flemish giants is 14 pounds. And he is right at 14 pounds, one ounce. These are big puppy dogs. You've probably heard thumping during the video shoots and seen he lives there. He's constantly running around back and forth thumping if we're not paying him any attention. They're very personable rabbits. They're very calm. A lot of people mistakenly think that this is a good meat rabbit. Um, if that's what you're looking for, Flemish are not a meat rabbit. 
they have very large bones, so the bone to meat ratio is very bad. They grow slow. It can take a Flemish up to a year to get senior weight. Plus they're big puppy dogs. We bought this one for our youngest as the giant rabbits are fairly common docile and he's a little high strung so we thought the Flemish giant would be a good mix. One thing to keep in mind as a general rule not it's not always true because like I said each rabbit has their own personality and different lines some people are more concerned with temperament than others but as generally small rabbits are a little more high strung than larger rabbits and then the Flemish being the largest breed recognized in the US are for the most part the most calm rabbit as I said he run if we're not paying attention to him he runs back and forth and dumps and tries to get us to over to pet him and he is our pet he's the barn pet he's not any good for show he's pretty to be honest he's got lousy type he's got good color he's a fawn but he likes it here, we like him, he's not going anywhere. Now one group we haven't talked about are the full arch breeds, the checkered giants, the English spots, Rhinelanders, tans, Belgian hares, and Britannia petites. I love them all, especially the Rhinelanders, that's probably my favorite breed, but I don't recommend them as your first rabbits. They're a little more high strung than most other breeds. The Britannian actually having a section in the standard warning that they're temperamental. The marked breeds such as the Rhinelanders, English Spots, and Checkers are very hard to breed. I used to average 8 to 10 bunnies a litter and I was happy when I got one showable let alone worth being shown. And that's one thing that I'm going to harp on is there's a difference between being showable and being worth showing. There are lots of rabbits that meet the standard that just plain aren't worth showing. And as you start to select your breeds and look at breeders, look at what they put on the table. Do they have one or two good rabbits and lots of junk they're putting on the table that place low in the class? Or are all their rabbits maybe not winning, but grouped close together showing a more consistent line? I aim for consistency. I may not win every class, every show, but most of my rabbits group together and that means that the quality is there. You just have to increase quality. You're not getting really good ones, really bad ones. That shows a weak line. So I hope you learned something today. As always, any questions or ideas Feel free to comment below. Please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much and have a great day.